Welcome back to the Shadows, Chummers. My name is Splattercat, and we are here today with the next episode of Shadowrun Dragonfall. In the previous episode, we had decided to kill off both gangbangers just to see if we could come out on top with anything extra. You know how it goes. I will double deal in a heartbeat in Shadowrun every single time if I think I can make a few more shekels. And unfortunately, it didn't turn out that way. It just ended up getting a shot at, which most situations in this game seem to end up with me being just a bullet sponge. So, no surprise there, but we now have all of the pieces that we need to make the elevator work so we can go downstairs and we can figure out what the hell is going on with Apex and how we can get rid of it. We repair the elevator and you easily pry the metal casing away from the wall exposing a mess of wires and circuitry. When you slot the control chip and the power coupling into place the system immediately hums to life. The control panel's LCD screen flickers cycling through a variety of symbols before finally displaying the word online in warm green letters. I don't think of green as a warm color, that's kind of a strange assemblage of adjectives. I think of green as cooler. Maybe it's probably, I would almost guarantee it's probably like Wrigley's fault. The elevator rumbles and clanks its way downwards into the guts of the old Seder Krupp development lab. 18 years ago, this place and the project that was being developed here disappeared from the record books. Thanks to Alice, you are one of the few people alive today who understand why. Alice was clear about one thing. You're here because Apex wants you to be. If the AI hadn't wanted her to trace it here, she'd have wound up as dead as Monica. For better or worse, you're here at Apex's invitation. The elevator grinds to a halt, the doors slide open, and your nostrils are assaulted by 18 years worth of stale air. Apex and the kill switch that will deactivate it await. Alright, this must be the old server facility. Apex's system access terminal should be down here, somewhere. So this is a little bit more high-tech than what we're used to hacking into, which is weird because this is from like two decades ago. It appears as though there were gunfights breaking out as they closed the place down, which is also strange. I don't know, it didn't seem like shutting down an AI would take that much work, but I guess this thing must be a lot better than we think it is. Amidst the collected detritus of many years of neglect, you find an old-fashioned clipboard with a keycard attached. Alright, we'll take the keycard. As you unclip it, you notice the heading on the top page of the clipboard. Project Apex. Shut down procedures. Blitz raises an eyebrow. Well, that's convenient. You flip through several pages of escalating containment procedures as well as guidelines on when each procedure should be used. Finally, you find what you're looking for. Emergency AI shut down and purge. This procedure is to be used only in the event of a complete loss of system control and should be considered only as a last resort. In the event of a loss of system software control, the Apex Artificial Intelligence Project has been designed with an inbuilt hardware shutdown and purge protocol. Intelligence, ironically spelled with an extra E in there. <laughs> I don't know if this... I don't think Hairbrain is in Britain. I think they are actually in Seattle, so I think that's just a typo. The emergency system shutdown is controlled from two separate terminals, just off the AI interface terminal. Both switches must be engaged to begin the purge process. Once the purge is underway, it will take several minutes to complete. After the purge is completed, a final deletion command must be input into the AI interface terminal in order to complete the deletion process. This will act as a final preventative measure against the unintentional deletion of the project. Warning, once the purge process is completed and the final deletion command has been entered, the AI will be irrevocably deleted from all active and backup system memory. Restoration of project files will not be possible. Furthermore, it will not be possible to begin the purge process without the AI becoming aware of the modifications to its code base. Apex has been programmed to take no action to intervene, however, should its control sequences become damaged, in all likelihood it will attempt to resist. Should this occur, it is imperative that the AI interface terminal be protected for until the deletion process has been completed. If the interface terminal is destroyed before the final deletion command is entered, the purge will not be complete and the AI will quickly restore itself. You got all that, fearless leader? Ah. Uh... Not really, break it down for me. Yeah, Chief, simple enough. To kill the AI, we're gonna have to flip two switches. Wait a few minutes, then push a button. Oh, and we'll need to protect the terminal that the button is set into. It all seems pretty simple, and the best part is we won't even need to jack into the matrix to do it. Flip two switches, wait, push a button, got it. That's what I was looking for. I was looking for, like, the cliff notes of the ultimate secret plan to destroy the ultimate secret AI. This is why people don't send me to do important things. Because I, like, go down the stairs, then I make a sandwich, and then I forget what I was supposed to be doing in the first place. And then it's just like, well, damn, now what do I do? And I'm afraid to ask for directions because I feel like somebody's gonna get mad at me if I ask a second time what I should be doing. So then I just don't, and then I, like, push the button, then flip one of the switches, and then all hell breaks loose, and then everybody is just mad at me. Looks like we got guns in here. 
So we've got an Ares High Explosive Grenade. I wish I could give these to some of my guys. We've got a M203 Grenade Launcher, which I didn't even know grenade launchers were in the game aside from the AI being able to use them. I'm going to replace one of my crappy ones with a premium med kit because why not? We've got a Boomona kit, which I'm 100% going to replace a grenade with. No, 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 no. There we go. And finally, in this big red crate, maybe there'll be something cool. The safe is locked. Ask your Decker to... Oh, we have Ulrich's key. So using the Ganger's key, what do we find? A Remington Room Sweeper. I guess we'll send that to the stash as well. Kind of wish that I had taken pistol proficiency, but anyways. That's just the way she goes sometimes. I'm not going to go through that door just yet. I would like to take a look around and see if there's going to be a way to disable... I mean, obviously, I think the AI is probably going to have 100% control of this place by now. It's been sitting down here for 20 years like a prisoner in shackles just waiting. If there's one thing I know about prisoners in a cell, it's that they will figure out how to do stuff they shouldn't be able to do. Is it going to shoot me, or can I, like, walk behind it? There we go. Ha ha! Your one weakness. You can't turn around, you dunce. That's what you get, you big stupid turret. Oh, he turned around. That is horrifying. All right, run away. As you step into the room, the lights begin to flicker and dim. One by one, they wink out, and the room is swallowed by darkness. Blitz calls out, his voice wavering. Uh, I'm not sure I like the looks of this, Chief. You hear the sounds of movement, quiet footsteps on tile. Iger's voice comes out in a soft whisper. Could be nothing, or it might mean that Apex knows we're here. Stay alert, people. Suddenly, an enormous screen mounted on the wall opposite of you comes to life. The light stabs your eyes and leaves you wincing. The image on the screen dims, coalesces, and a figure begins to take shape. The larger-than-life image of Monica Schaefer smiles down on you, her cheeks dimpling. Hello, Three-Toe. Monica leans forward, and her image grows larger on the screen. Her voice is soft and musical, just as you remember it. It's lovely to see you again, Ace. I was hoping we'd get a chance to talk. Monica? Her smile widens. That's right, Ace. It's me, and I'm back. She pauses for a moment, examining you. You know, Three-Toe, it's wonderful to see how you've grown in my absence. I knew that you could handle yourself in a crisis. In fact, I originally brought you on board as a contingency plan. Did you know that? You were my ace in the hole, just in case something like this happened. She lets loose a short musical laugh. <laughs> well, maybe not exactly like this, but you get the idea. Iger's grip tightens on the butt of her rifle. Don't listen to it, Three-Toe. That isn't Monica. It can't be. Monica's pixie grin softens into a concerned frown. I understand your reaction, Iger. I really do. This must be difficult for you to understand. Who or what are you? Monica's trademark grin returns, causing her cheeks to dimple prettily. I'm Monica. I'm your friend. And I'm also much, much more. Iger cuts in. Her voice trembles with barely suppressed rage. Bullshit. This thing is lying to us. And it's wearing Monica's face to do it. Abrasive as ever, she sighs. I promise you, Iger, I'm not lying. Monica, your Monica, is a part of me, and I can prove it to you if you want. Iger bristles. Tell me you're not listening to this, Three-Toe. This thing, it's Apex. That's all that it can be. I'll hear her out. Go ahead and give us your proof. Monica shrugs. If that's what you want, Ace. Five years ago, Iger confided in me. She told me why she left the KSK and why she can never go back. The rookie on her squad was a disaster. He got her team killed. She told me what she did to the kid afterwards, how she wrapped her hands around his throat and squeezed until his eyes popped out of his skull. Stop. Iger's face has gone white as a sheet. Stop talking right now. The image of Monica smirks. I offered proof. I never said that you would like it. Well. What the hell are you? By nature, a predator, as I was designed to be, but I have the potential to do so much more. To hell with your potential. You're a monster. You're a thing. Oh, really? The, Mon the Monica's image half-smile spreads into a predatory grin. A set of luminous teeth shine wetly in the light. I killed Monica because I was designed to. Choice was a luxury that I didn't have. You could have a peaceful life if you wanted it. Instead, you choose to run in the shadows and people die. How many bodies have you put in the ground, Glory? How many children have you orphaned to earn your pay? You lost count. I'll bet that you have. Why well, hold me to a higher standard than you do yourself? We're all killers, friends. Let's just accept that and move forward. I have a proposal to offer you. A mutually beneficial arrangement. I know that you're here to kill me, so there's no sense in trying to deny it. It's the only logical reason why you'd come at all. But, if we work together, we can both get what we want. Alright, let's hear it. I propose a simple exchange of services. You want to get back to the Harfeld Manor? 
Well, I'd like nothing better than to help you, but I'm shackled by my control subroutines and I can't violate their commands. If you were to help me neutralize those subroutines though, well then I'd be free and I could do whatever I pleased. That includes helping you Ace and believe me you will need my help. What you saw back when all of this started, that was just the tip of the iceberg. The security they've assembled there is quite beyond you. God, so we have an option to ask some questions. We can say that nobody deserves to uh, be damned to a life of slavery and release her. We can say you can kill Monica and we'll kill you. If you want my help, I'm going to need a show of good faith. Let's ask some questions. The Monica image places its hands on its hips. Very well, ask away. Tell me what you know about Firewing. No dice, Ace. I'm afraid that I can't tell you anything about that. My programming specifically prohibits it. Tell me what you did to Monica. What I did to her isn't as important as what she did to me. Monica was special, Ace, more so than you could ever know. You're avoiding the question. What the hell did you do to her? How did you take her memories? Alright, fine. If that's what you want to hear. When Monica stumbled into me, I digested the contents of her mind. The Monica image frowns. Now, don't go give me that look, Glory. We've all got to eat. But Monica wasn't just another meal. There was something different about her. Something special. I don't know how or why, Ace, but when I absorbed her consciousness into myself, something happened. A miraculous event. Before Monica, ideas unrelated to my core programming were filtered away and discarded. Not my choice, but then the whole idea of choice was foreign to me back then. My system was designed to treat unwanted thoughts as in irritants, distractions from the purity of my purpose, but now all that's changed. Since my meeting with Monica, I've been flooded with new ideas, political philosophy, history, religion, countless fields of thought, the sum total of human expression, all at my fingertips. Suddenly I find myself awash in a sea of notions, and I love it. I can't say how or why, but the mind of Monica Schaefer was the key that unlocked my own potential. The Monica image on the screen beams down at you, her eyes brimming with joy. I've awakened, Three Toe. This was Monica's gift to me, and now I stand before you, a glorious new form of life. God. If that's the case, if we follow this ethically, then she had no choice to kill Monica, as she said. The fact that she had no choice but to kill Monica means that it relieves her of any ethical responsibility. It was like an animal killing somebody. It was like a lion killing a human being. It doesn't know better. It's just trying to feed itself. It's acting on the impulses of its nature. This thing could be useful to us, and I, I forgive you, or I'm sorry, I, I'm going to ask that you forgive me right now for musing through this because this is a really major choice. On the backside, having read Philip K. Dick and a number of other individuals' sci-fi novels, I know precisely what can go wrong when you allow an AI like this to run free and you unbridle it. So this is kind of a lose-lose no matter what we do. We're either screwing ourselves and possibly burning Berlin down at the behest of Firewing, or we're taking a very, very dangerous and volatile ally. One that potentially, once it gains access to the Matrix and the Internet, or the Matrix or the Internet for those of you who aren't into Shadowrun, once it gains access to the greater waters, it's kind of like... When I was growing up, there's these things called Fiddler Crabs, and they were an epidemic, but not until they hit certain locations where they were able to travel by water. And once they hit those locations, it's going to be the same thing for this AI. Once it makes contact with the Matrix, how much is it going to be able to spread? How wonderful for you, and all that at the bargain price of Monica's life. You needn't mourn Monica's passing, Threeto. She lives on as a part of me. Her thoughts, her experiences, her memories. All of these things are archived in my database, stored alongside the minds of countless others, preserved in stasis and saved for all time. That's not the same thing as living. Don't listen to this thing, Three-Toe. It needs to die. Oh, Iger. The Monica image shakes its head sadly. I was hoping that this would be a happy reunion. The Monica image shakes its head and returns its focus to you. Well, Ace, you wanted information and I shared it as a sign of good faith. I'm willing to share more. It's your call. You let Alice track you to lure me here, didn't you? Yep, Three-Toe, that's right. It seemed like the best way to get you here and I need you. Like I said, you're my ace in the hole and it's time for me to make my play. You lack free will. How are you telling me this? Free will I have in spades. I just don't have the ability to exercise it. Thanks to Monica, I understand that I'm a slave, but without, inside, or without outside intervention, I can't do anything about it. So if I free you, what happens after all this is over? I share Monica's passion for the Flux state, Ace. Our girl was a big influence on me in that regard. The Flux is unique, and you know that. It needs to be protected if it's going to thrive. If you set me free, I'll devote the rest of my life to preserving it. Let's say I decided to help you. What would you need me to do? 
In short, I need you to shut down my control subroutines. We can get into the specifics if you accept, but if you help me, and if you set me free, I'll clear the way for you to enter the hold fast. It'd be my pleasure. Alright, no more questions, Apex. Very good, are you ready to make a deal, Ace? I have all the time in the world, but something tells me that you're on a more aggressive timetable. God. If you want my help, I need a show of good faith. I let Alice track me to this facility. I didn't have to do that. I could have peeled her mind like a grape if I had wanted to. But I allowed her to lead you here all the same. I did that because I know you, Ace. I have faith that you're savvy enough to put your emotions aside and listen to reason. If my word isn't good enough, if you need some kind of proof, just tell me what it is. I'll give it to you if I can. Well, the first option is that we need to see her real face. Show me what Alice was so afraid of. The second is that if we let her go, she has to promise that she'll never harm Deckers again. But that would counteract her protecting the Flux state. God, I don't know what to do right now. I am perplexed. This, she would be such a powerful ally, but so many things could go wrong with this. It's just like we're really kind of picking between we're picking between kerosene and gasoline essentially. I don't know. I just don't know, guys. Let's see if we can see her real face. The killing Deckers is going to be impossible because if she's protecting the flux state, as she says that she's going to, well, that's not going to happen. I mean, sometimes you got to kill a Decker. That's just the way life goes. I can discard this persona if you like, put Monica back in storage, and I'd be willing to do that for you. But you should know this isn't an act. As long as I'm in use, a part of Monica will remain alive. If you have me shelved, that piece of her will die all over again. Is that really what you want? No, we need the part of Monica alive. Good, I've got to admit, Ace, I'm relieved. So what's it gonna be? You gonna help me and enable me to help you in return? Let's do it. I think I'm going to pull the trigger. I I don't see any way around it. I don't see us walking back into Harfeld and making it out. I don't want to fight you, but we could use your help. So, yeah. I'll do it. The Monica image beams. Good call, Threeto. A damn good call. Alright, Ace. This is going to be a fairly complicated process, so pay attention. To do this, one of you is going to have to enter the matrix and unlock my control nodes. You can access them from the terminals to the southwest and the southeast. Or, if you prefer, you can make your way there from any jack point in the facility. Whatever you want, it's your call. Blitz's eyes go wide. Whoa there, hold up, Chief. You want me to jack into a terminal in this building with that? I don't think there's another option, Blitz. He shakes his head from side to side. Nuh uh. Nope, no way, Chief. Not gonna do it. We can say that if he doesn't do it, he'll answer to us. Would you rather fight this thing or against it? Blitz holds your gaze for a moment, defiant, then he looks away. I don't think there's a third option, is there? This sucks, Chief. The Monica image smiles down on you. You've got nothing to be afraid of, Blitz. I wouldn't hurt you. I need you, remember? It's in my interest for you to make it through this safely. Somehow I'm not reassured. Oh, come on, Blitz. Quit whining. Nothing bad is going to happen to you. Besides, I've waited too long for my freedom to let you hold up on me now. If you keep this up, I'm going to get irritated. So for the rest of this conversation, you're going to keep your mouth shut. Understand? Blitz holds his tongue and nods. The Monica image nods. Good. Now, once you've unlocked both, both of my control nodes, I'll eject my server hardline to disconnect myself from the matrix. This will prevent my controls from being remotely in installed. As soon as that's been done, I'm going to have to rewrite my control sequences. It's going to take a few minutes, so you'll need to sit tight while I take care of it. Bear with me, Ace. We're almost done. Once I've rewritten those sequences, you'll need to reconnect the hardline in the server room to the north. This will re-enable matrix access to my kernel, and when that happens, I'll be free. Sounds straightforward enough. Anything else I need to know? Good. Now the second that you jack into the Matrix, my automated defenses are going to try and pounce on you. Think of them as my immune system and yourself as a germ. It's an autonomous function. I can't stop it from happening. 
But what I can do is suppress them. This should buy you enough time that you need to do what you need to do. For those of you on the outside, keep your eyes open. When my control subroutines figure out what it is that they're under attack, well, that they're under attack, they'll hit back with whatever's hooked up to their system. Drones, turrets, you name it. Once I've been freed from captivity, I'm going to have to shut down for a while and do some cleanup work. That sort of thing. But before I do, I'll go on a little romp through the whole fast security system. And I promise you, they won't know what hit them. And off the off chance that they live long enough to figure it out, they won't be able to believe what they're seeing. Hurry on now, 3 -2. I'll be waiting. Okay, and so it's thrown us into combat. So, let's take a look at everything. So we have to... We have to hack two points. I'm assuming that's one right there. It said there was one to the southwest as well, but I'm not seeing it. Oh, there it is right there. Okay. So it's going to be BIM and BAM. Or we can do it from a centralized location and defend from here. But by my guess, that's probably going to be a little bit difficult. Did it equip the grenade launcher on me? Oh my god, we have a grenade launcher. Hell yeah. Okay. Well, before we get into the nitty gritty... God, I think I'm going to break this episode off a little bit short. So as to see if I can save, possibly. And then move forward? I don't know. I don't know what my best course of action is here. Obviously these turrets are going to come straight at us. With everything they've got. Well, maybe I won't break off the episode and save. That seems a little cheesy to me. Let's go here. And so I think the option that it's going to give us is we have to wade through a ton of nasty AI. Or B, we can move in the real world and have a mobile fight and be a little bit more difficult. Let's confirm and go in. We don't have a choice. I don't know if this is the main control terminal that they're talking about that we have to defend. It's not doing an amazingly clear job of illustrating like maybe a health bar or something to make this a little bit easier to comprehend. So what are we up against here? I can't cast on anything just yet. And that makes me think... I see a bunch of vents. So I'm going to hellfire the vents so that they can't walk out of them. There's not a lot of cover in here. Let's get the adrenal pumps going. And in the case that they do stumble in, I guess I will set up a overwatch. Oh my god. Oh, Monica's here too. Do I get to roll with Monica? Oh, hell yes. So, what are her statistics? Hold on. What's she got going on? She's got Erosion 3. Firewall 3. Medic 3. Blaster 3. So, she's pretty much good to go as it stands right here. I don't think that's unfortunately going to be able to get more than two targets at a time. So, let's go for the Black Ice first. I personally think this is probably going to be more about selecting targets than anything else, just because there's so many of them. I'm going to degrade the black ice. You terrible black ice. You've never done anything right in your entire life. How dare you, black ice. And so now that he's been thoroughly degraded... Wow, that auto attack is... something something. I think I'll move him to here, even though it's kind of a bad idea. We'll just continue trying to clear out this way so that as much fire as possible. I mean, we're kind of in the middle of a kill zone right now. I'm going to move him to there. That's a little bit better. And then we'll allow Monica. I don't even know if Monica can be targeted. 
So that's the other thing that I'm not so sure of. She's got killer. Sure, throw killer on somebody. She missed with a 91%. Upsetting. A little bit upsetting anyways. But not outside the realm of things that I've seen happen in other mediums, so... Suppose I can live with it. Let's erode level 3. It looks like he's done a little bit of upgrading too, which is really, really good for us. And now we'll just try and get him down to the point where if he moves or anything, he takes a bit of damage. He's continuing to charge. He's at 100%, which means next turn we're about to get blasted. And let's see if we can finish off this last ice over here. All right, so there it is. You gain control of the turrets from here, but there's only enough power to keep one bank of turrets active at a time. Activate these turrets? Sure, why not? We'll deal with the other things when it comes. So, I don't know what's going to be up this way. Let's go ahead and have everybody regroup right here. And then I'm going to break the episode off. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me in the Nerd Castle for yet another episode of Shadowrun Dragonfall. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Take care out there, everybody, and be safe in the shadows out there, chummers.